Materials in Unity are the assets that control the visual appearance of game objects. Applied to a renderer component, the material is essentially an asset that brings together a shader, a script that controls the appearance of a rendered surface, and its required properties such as colors and textures. Materials can be made by using the Create button on the project panel, and once you've created this asset, it can be assigned to a renderer component, and a shader can be chosen from the drop down list. Materials can also be generated from models brought in from 3D packages, but we will discuss this later. As a basic example, if we have a primitive cube in Unity, and an example material ready to use on it, we can assign this to the mesh renderer. The mesh renderer is the component used to render any 3D mesh. We'll assign this to the material slot. By default, a primitive mesh has Unity's default diffuse material assigned to it. We'll replace this with our example material. Whilst I have assigned this material by dragging it directly to the material's property, I could also assign it by dragging it to the model or dropping it into the scene. And you can see that Unity previews what that material would look like on the mesh that we're dropping onto. Once assigned, we see settings for this material below other components in the inspector. It's important to know that this part of the inspector's settings are simply a shortcut to editing the material asset. This is important because when changing the properties of a material on the object, you are actually changing the material asset itself. For example, if I make this material red, the asset has been made red. So for example, if I have a sphere, and assign the same material, it too will be red. And when adjusting the material on either of those objects, we're simply adjusting the asset so any object using that material will be changed too. When introducing 3D assets from a modeling application, Unity will create the materials in a materials subfolder in the location of the asset, as well as assigning textures for you. For example, this Blastor asset has been brought into Unity, and we have saved its textures into a folder called Textures, which Unity automatically searches in order to reassign it to the material that it creates. The two parts of the asset are the door and the frame. Both of these assets share the same material and simply use different parts of the texture to render them. The material that's been created is Prop underscore Blastor, and I can see that if I click on it, it's highlighted in the project panel. As standard when introducing this, we would be shown a diffuse shader. This is a flat standard look for rendering 3D meshes. We have a normal map for this asset, so we can instead choose a bump shader such as bump diffuse to make use of this texture. The normal map is a way of storing height and directional information that's projected onto the surface of a flat mesh in order to give it the appearance of surface detail without adding vertices to the geometry itself. And if you look at the mesh in the scene or game view, you can see the difference that this makes. So the dents, grooves and scratches on our blast door are accentuated in the normal map texture. We could also extend this to give it a shiny surface by choosing Bumped Specular. Here, in addition to the texture and the normal map, we're also able to set the shininess. So we've gone from our default flat look to a nice shiny looking dented door simply by adjusting the shader. We haven't had to add any more detail to the original model, and that's the true power of using materials. Unity ships with many shaders that will cover all manner of game development needs, and you can also write your own shaders and assign them. You can create these also from using the Create button on the project panel.